Hey guys, uh, it's Brian F again. I'm back with another video and I'm going to be covering Balrog's turnaround punch or tap. And I want to go over this move because it received a lot of changes from season one to season two. It was pretty much completely useless in season one and now it's probably one of Balrog's strongest moves. And it has a lot of varying properties and I don't think a lot of players really understand the move and what's happening when it comes out and at the moment in the meta it feels like you can kind of just throw a tap out and some things may happen and nobody is really familiar what's going on so i'm going to cover what the move does what the properties are depending on the level and how you can both use it offensively defensively and how to counter it if you're playing against a balrog player so tap turn around punch for the basics. It's just a charge move where you hold two or more buttons. You only need two buttons, any two buttons. You charge it and release. Press the button down, release. It has multiple levels of charging. So uh, the longer you charge it, the, uh, the more damage and the more advantage it has on hit and block. So level one, that is negative two on block, plus one on hit. Um, there's gonna be a lot of numbers thrown around. I recommend getting the frame uh, assistant tool, or I think it might be frame advantage tool. I always mix up the name as fat in the app store. It's what I use on my phone, very useful. Um, so each level of Balrog's turnaround punch increases in advantage by one frame. So let me just see what I have here. So that's a three frame standing light kick. If I hit you with a level one tap, I am negative two on block. I cannot press any buttons here. You will beat me every time with your three or four frame jab. I'm negative two. If it happens to hit you, I'm only plus one on hit. I can't get a combo, can't really approach. There's not much I can do. However, you can always co uh, combo from any counter hit tap. So on counter hit, you gain two frames of advantage. If you're a ball rock player and you see counter hit, you should always go to your light kick target combo. It'll combo from any counter hit, which is really useful because you can do things like this. Or, uh, excuse me. You know, you can get some kind of beat trigger activation combo. You can get a lot off of it, off of random hit if you hit confirm the counter hit. So what's the deal with it? If you charge longer since you're gaining a frame of advantage every time, uh, it becomes increasingly powerful the longer you hold it. So that was level two. Le level two is negative one on block, which means if you're facing a four frame jab character, here, let's see. That's a four frame jab. Some characters only have a four frame jab. You'll trade with your three frame. So it's kind of like a tool you can use to get in for free with relatively low risk. Um, so you can trade with four frame. Um, when it starts really becoming useful is level three and up. Level three, it is zero on block and plus three on hit, which means you can combo to your standing light kick um, target combo, regardless of counter hit or not. The issue with level three is it takes four seconds uh, four seconds to charge. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, four. Level three. I am finally uh, zero. So you saw the four frame jab was counter hit. If you're playing a three frame jab character, you will trade. So this is a very useful tool. And if it hits, you get a combo. So it's a pretty safe situation to be at your zero. And if it hits, like I said, you get a free target combo. That is a four hit combo there. So level three is where ball rock players are going to be looking to get to. And it's pretty tricky because there's no visual difference between any of the turnaround punches. You must be listening to the audio cues. So you should be hearing um, Balrog yell the number that he's, uh, uh, the number of the tap that he's charged up to. So he'll yell one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, level four is where it gets real dirty because he is actually plus one on block. 
Now, level four takes eight seconds of charge time. So you need to be able to play the whole time while charging up taps to level four. But it's really useful because once you reach level four, you can get in for free if they don't interrupt you on the way in. Oh, that was level five. Charge it for too long. But the idea is the same. You get in and you're able to press a button. That was uh, level three. But you'll counter hit a three frame um, reversal jab with your own three frame. Uh, sorry, it's eight seconds of charge time. It's a long time to charge, which makes testing it a pain. But people can still use armored reversals to get through your light kick after the the level four tap. There, level four, you get the counter hit, you get free pressure. Um, so aside from just building up plus frames and having combo ability, it also has a lot of other properties to it where the hitbox your ballery's hitbox actually changes based on the level of tap now this is where people kind of don't understand what's going on tap is throw invincible on all levels on frame 3 through 18 of the move so i'm going to go ahead and show some notes i have of the move so you can see here i have the charge time listed out there's three different variations of tap so levels one through three have uh, throw and upper body invincibility on frames three through 18. So what this means is that on reversal, Balrog is completely unthrowable at the startup of this move. In Street Fighter V, when you are knocked down and you recover, or when you come out of block stun or hit stun, there are two frames uh, as a rule where you are not throwable, you are throw invincible. So if you reversal with tap, for the first two frames of your recovery or of your reversal by the system engine, you cannot be thrown. On frame three, the throw invincibility for tap kicks in. So that means you cannot be th thrown for those frames. However, as this move has 26 frames of startup, the invincibility will run out on frame 18. So there is a window where you can be thrown. Um, it also has upper body invincibility, which means certain moves will whiff. If you hit, if your hitbox is going above Balrog's waist during this period, it'll just whiff. So, um, here, I'll, I'll have the, the dummy. So, he's quick rising and doing wake up tap. If I dash forward, I'm actually plus three. So if I do my jab, I'm hitting, my four frame jab will hit on his frame one. So you see, I'm counter hitting him because the invincibility doesn't kick in until frame three. Same thing with the, the, the jab up high. However, my standing medium kick should be hitting on frame three. So let's see what happens if I attempt to hit with that. You notice it whiffs. On frame three, that upper body invincibility kicks in and causes it to whiff. I would also normally be able to throw here, but you see wake up tap um, avoids it. So you can use this as both an offensive and defensive tool. It's more powerful offensively once people understand this uh, invincibility range. So for instance, if I, uh, which one is it? I think it's, Wake up three frame. So if I do dash up here, my throw will beat wake up three frame every time. But as you saw before, wake up tap will beat this this uh, attempted meaty throw. So what happens if I attempt to do the throw? It whiffs, but I'm able to block. There is too much startup for it to actually punish a properly timed throw. Now, with quick rise and back roll, you're not going to have a clean setup like this every time, but um, Balrog doesn't really have an automatically timed throw loop. So just imagine this is a situation with like Ken, for instance, or Nikali V Trigger, or some character that has uh, Ibuki, Ibuki's knockdowns, which are hard knockdowns where you cannot quick rise, or, or excuse me, you cannot back roll. This becomes a situation where you can still do your throw loops. However, all you have to do is OS it. If you are a plus three and you go for a throw, you are able to hit tap before it hits you with a four frame move. If you are a plus two and go for a meaty throw, 
where you are able to do a, a three frame move and hit it before it hits you. Otherwise, you trade. So since I'm I'm plus three when I go for this throw loop here, if I do a five frame move, I'll trade. Excuse me. So basically, I'm just I'm going for throw and then mashing. If they were to tech the throw or they were to get hit by the throw, you wouldn't see the mash. The throw would either come out and hit the opponent or you would just see the tech animation and I would stop mashing. Um, but I can just do this as an option select if I time it properly and get a full combo punish. So throw loops are still a factor. Throw loops are most definitely still a factor even with this invincibility. Um, like I said, it will get sloppy if you have quick rise and back roll in the mix because then you're not going to get a perfect meaty every time and it might cause issues. However, there are still ways to get around it. Another thing that it can be used for is interrupting strings and certain frame traps. So a lot of strings in this game rely on hitting on the third frame. So if you have a string... Where is this? I think it's the last one. So, for instance, this string with Balrog will interrupt three frame light kick. Jab to standing medium kick. This is the frame trap I go to and it will beat um, your reversal jabs due to the priority system, but it hits on frame three. That means that Level one tap will get around that because of the upper body invincibility. Now, obviously, if I go low, it doesn't have any lower body invincibility. You can just hit it every time. Um, so, but for moves that rely on the th on hitting on the third frame with priority and our upper body will, will be beat by level one through three tap. So there are some situations like that however if you're also aware of this you can just recover from your your string and still interrupt the tap in time so it requires a high level of awareness but there's always options to interrupt it and you can develop option selects based on your own character and your own strings to handle this because it's kind of a pseudo reversal at the moment um so it gets a little funkier once you hit level four or six but level four requires eight seconds of charge time it's fully body, full body in, uh, invincible. And that just means that it'll also avoid lows. So if you're just like scared to tap, well, normal level one, you can just harass with lows. You know, you can just, anything that hits low. Like, like th even this jab is not, has too high of a hitbox for a tap to avoid. Whereas you can see my stand jab will just, it'll just whiff. If this was a level four charge tap, it would go around these lows. It's kind of hard to show since it requires eight seconds of charge time, but it would actually avoid this. And, um, and it would be a lot more plus on block. So you'd have to respect it. You'd have to listen to it. And if you ended up blocking it, you probably had to respect the plus frames. It is V reversible. If you block a high level tap, I probably recommend just V reversing to get out of the situation. Um, and if you get to level seven, I think that might be a mistake I have in the notes there. Uh, I think level seven is actually first frame invincible. Yeah, that's a, that's a mistake there. Whoops. Let me correct that. It's actually invincible on frame one, um, but for all of the taps, it runs out of invincibility before it hits, so there's always a way to interrupt it if you're prepared for it. However, you might not want to try this if you're on the other end of uh, the, you know, if you're defending against it. So, I forget where I put this. I want him to wake up throw. There it is. So, it's a really good offensive throw bait as well. Here, let me take off this. Let me just show some examples of how to use it offensively. So, same idea. If I dash up, this is a meaty throw. It'll beat buttons. You're kind of forced to attack there. However, if I dash up, that is a true punish. I am plus three on this. And by the time 
the throw, the tap hits, the throw has not recovered if you attempt to throw. So, as you can see here, that is a real punish. So if you're plus two or plus three and you do a throw bait, you're actually going to hit your opponent. So it's very good for just surprising your opponent. You can just dash up and fake um, a throw and hit them like that. And the dirty thing is, this is V-triggerable cancelable. You can get a full combo from it. And this means any situation where you're plus two, you can go for throw or tap mix-ups. So a common situation with Balrog is you end in V-skill P from your EX dash punch and your point blank and your plus two. This is a really, really powerful time to go for tap. So I think I have some... So yeah, so the dummy here is gonna do V-skill to tap. So I'm trying to tap and then I, or I try to tech the throw that I think is coming and then I block and it gets hit. So you can use this to constantly keep the pressure and keep your opponent guessing. And you could also just simply throw there instead. It's kind of a 50-50 in that kind of sense. So um, this same thing applies as well if you're in V-Trigger, which is even dirtier because you can continue the Rekka sequence from tap. Tap is actually V uh, Rekka cancelable and V-Trigger. So if I do a turnaround punch and I hold forward and punch, or if I do forward and kick, you will get a Rekka. So you can start doing V-Trigger Rekka's the V-Skill, and I have another layer of mix-up because people will be expecting a throw or frame trap there. And like I said, even if the opponent is pressing buttons, if it's an upper body move, that's not a low, level one tap will avoid it. So it becomes very, very scary. And can lead to, you know, huge damage and stun. But, so offensively it's extremely powerful and you need to be listening to the level to understand what your actions, what actions are allowed after doing it. But there's still answers to it. So you see here I have Balrog doing V skill and to medium kick, medium kick. So if I think a throw is coming, I might attempt to reversal with um, tap. But you can still do these upper body strings and you can try OSing. I mean, this is kind of a silly OS because I'm just mashing medium kick. And if I press a button, or this is for four frame jab characters, it doesn't really work on Balrog, but it combos. And um, it OS is reversal tap. So if you're doing regular throws, if you have a standing reset and you're plus two, you should be able to control tap. You should be able to do one string that OS is tap if it comes out. It's not as easy if you get a knockdown that can be back roll or quick rise because then you're not gonna get a clean setup and things can get funky and tap might just smack you out of nowhere and kill you. But if you can control that, get standing resets or hard knockdowns, you can definitely um, beat those options. That still means that this is a really strong option versus uh, command grab characters because it'll just punish all command grabs. If you do a tap on wake up and they go for a command grab, you will beat them and you will punish them for it. Um, but for everyone else, or even for grappler characters, you can try to limit your offense to regular throws and OS it on the way in. So, inclusion tap is extremely, extremely powerful in this game. You can avoid things, you can use it to avoid jump-ins with the upper body invincibility. You can dash up and just um, make people think you're gonna go for a throw, tap around it, get a V-trigger cancel and kill them. You can use it to wake up and go through certain strings. But if you are trying to counter Balrog, you can do strings that have option selects behind them to interrupt it. It's the same mentality as OSing backdash in Street Fighter 4. And you can do those counters and you can counter hit it on the way in because invincibility will always run out before the tap hits. So that's all I wanted to say about tap. Um, there's a lot more utility to it and a lot of techniques you can do to throw off your opponent and there's a lot of things that you can do to prevent it from happening. Um, it's definitely a move you need to lap up and it's very relevant in this season and it's going to be around for the rest of the season too. So um, do yourself a favor and learn strings that can counter tap, understand how it works and uh, hopefully you know people will be able to both utilize this more effectively and defend against it. Thanks for watching everybody.